Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And uh, man, we're starting off the new year with a lot of dismal Disney news, aren't uh -huh. we? Uh-huh. So we did a video yesterday talking about how Disney got shut out of the Annie Awards, the first time they've, they've never had a nomination for Best Feature in the Annie since 1992. And the following day, or actually I think the following evening, it was announced that Pixar is gonna be laying off like 20% of their staff. Um, this is not <laughs> this is not a good sign, guys. And of course, this was gonna happen because Pixar hasn't been making much money, have they? No. And uh, you know, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. Uh, people were asking what our opinion was on on Twitter. I said I still think before it's all said and done that Disney Animation and Pixar will probably be moved under one roof. But I, I don't know. I don't know. Let's talk about it. before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do. Mm -hmm. Go out to shopclownfish.com. Just two days, two days remaining to pick up a copy of Crimson Ren and previously on Clownfish TV. Uh, the graphic novels, these books are shipping pretty much daily. Mm -hmm. In fact, Geeky just uh, packed, packed up some more. Speaking of Pixar, there's a joke in here about yeah. uh, Inside Out. But yeah, so... Man, I don't know. I don't know where to go with this one. Uh, do you have any thoughts, Geeky? Of this? this? Oh, I, I mean, I'm not surprised. I think there's a number of things going on here. I mean, Disney Plus needs to be profitable. It's not. They they've kind of messed up Pixar and the fact that they've trained people to wait for it to come to Disney Plus. And Pixar, remember, Pixar employees were upset about it. Yeah. They were like worried. They were very discouraged and disheartened, or whatever they said it was. And the last couple of movies didn't do very well. No, uh, Elemental eventually, as I understand it, it eventually became profitable, but it took them a while and it took them going overseas. And honestly, they're picking up the slack for the other movies mm -hmm. that didn't do well. Lightyear and mm -hmm. some of the ones that weren't released theatrically. And then also they're probably picking up the slack for Disney's own movies, Wish and uh, Strange, Strange World, World bombing. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about the layoffs and we'll, we'll speculate. We'll do some speculation. I still haven't seen Elemental. Some people said it was actually pretty good. I haven't seen it either, but that's more about time than anything. Yeah, TechCrunch has it. Uh, Disney-owned studio Pixar is poised to undergo layoffs later this year. TechCrunch has learned and the company confirmed it. While sources at the company said the layoffs would be significant and as high as 20%. It's like a fifth of their staff. Mm -hmm. Um Reductions that would see Pixar's team of 1,300 drop to less than 1,000 over the coming months. Pixar says those numbers are too high. They're being optimistic. Uh, rather, the studio said the number of impacted employees is still being determined due to factors like production schedules and staffing for future greenlit films. Which, well, well, we know Disney's not going to do as many films. No. Uh, I mean, I would like to see Pixar go back to one good movie every other year. But John Lasseter has gone. Ever since they got rid of John Lasseter, I mean, how many freaking movies did they have that one year? They had like three movies out. They just like, they're just like slam and they all went to direct to Disney plus. Well, I want to point out too that when I started doing that during the pandemic, um, they didn't release like Turning Red and Luca and Soul theatrically, but they're releasing them now starting, I think was a couple today. Soul was coming out today and they're releasing Luca yeah. and um, Turning Red through March like one a month because they didn't release them theatrically before. So they're trying to, to release them theatrically now. Um, I don't think it's going to do that well. Yeah. It was so weird about this back to um, back to yesterday about how Disney and Pixar got, got shut out of the best animated feature. Uh, Nimona, which was created for streaming after Disney dropped it, wound up walking away with a, a bunch of nominations mm -hmm. and it was created for streaming. Probably you know, it cost a fraction of what it cost to make the average Pixar or Disney movie. Well, they said that they bring that up too. Um, in this article later on, they're talking about one of the reasons they're having problems is because their, their films cost $200 million each. Their competitors are like 75 million. Yeah. You know, so that you're already starting out having to make 400, 500 million just to break even right out, out the gate. Yeah. And they're not bringing in the money like they used to. And look, the, the Pixar movies, they made money several different ways. It wasn't just at the box office and there for a while, like every Pixar movie was making bank, but it's also merchandise. The and merchandise, theme I think, park. even more so. Yeah. Um, Toy Story. The reason they make so many Toy Story movies is they sell Toy Story toys. Mm -hmm. uh, cars, literally. The reason cars exist beyond the first one, because the first one was a vanity project for, for Lassiter. But the reason it exists is because they sold a bunch of Hot Wheels, 
basically. Yeah. That's that's my understanding. And uh, they sold a lot of cars toys, you know, Lightning McQueen stuff. And then they they had Cars Land where they could oh. sell more stuff. That's just it. They have a Cars Land. They're having different Pixar, you know, Pixar Pier and different Pixar um, IP in the parks. And, you know, I was thinking about this. So a lot of them are geared at little kids, like Monsters, Inc., Wall-E, Toy Story, yeah. Find Nemo, Cars. They're more geared at little kids. I, th- I don't think Inside Outs as much as the other ones. And because of that, you know, those toys resonated with kids. That's why they stick with them. And they're, you know, they're, they're more of a, a positive thing. Like, I think Coco's a really good movie, but I don't know if the message would go to kids as well. So you don't see that one selling toys like the other ones do. If that makes sense. Yeah, there was a rumor they were going to retheme the, the Mexico Pavilion in Epcot for Coco, which... They did somewhat, though. Kind of. At the ha- entryway, they yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think they were trying to figure out, like, where to put this stuff. Um, Wally kind of fell off completely. I mean, he's a cute character, but that, that was a pretty weighty movie too. Yeah, weighty uh, in so many ways. Uh, it was. It was very... It was, uh, very, it was very good predictor of what our future holds. Yes, we are living Wally right now. But, uh, you know, I thought they would have done more with that maybe in like Epcot or something, and they didn't. But, uh, you know, Toy Story Cars, those are the money makers. Finding mm-hmm. Nemo, they shoehorned it into rides. I, I can't see a turning red ride. No, I would, that be, would worried. be really weird. Sponsored well, by bo- Tampax. Uh, Body Wars. They could bring it back. No. Uh, journey into your vagina. No one's no one. Journey into your and it's a, it's a, t- a, a teenage girl. I, I think that would be on brand, but it would not be a wise decision. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. So they said that uh, Disney Plus has had subscribers, but that that's not enough to bankroll the cost of these movies. Right. Um. They said that uh, they finally expect their streaming service to be profitable by Q4 2024, but it's not going to be if you're bankrolling $200 million animated movies. That's why they're they're cutting films. So they don't need the yeah. staff because they're saying they're waiting to see what's what is going to get pushed through, who they need to assign to it, and everybody else is probably going to get, get gone. Yeah. Now, they did say that uh, Elemental did finally make a half a billion worldwide. Yeah, it, but I still think that's – I think it might have broke even. I don't think it made money. It broke even. They said bro- uh, break even according to this article, which we looked at yesterday. Yeah, but that was June also. That was the beginning. It did better overall. They said that uh, break even for Elemental was about 400 Okay, so million. it did break even, and I, I think it's higher than that when you figure – when you figure like uh, marketing and everything else. But okay, we'll yeah. say it maybe it broke even and maybe made a little bit of money. Yeah. Um, but yeah. it wasn't like a, a major win. Because no. Because these it, movies are too expensive. Yeah. And when you're making up for Strange World and you're making up for Lightyear, especially, which Lightyear, again, that one blows my mind. Like that movie should have been guaranteed money. But That's would how have been it, if it was actually Buzz Lightyear. If it was actually Buzz Lightyear, if it was actually a Buzz Lightyear movie, I guarantee you this movie would have made bank. If it was actually the movie everybody expected, which, you know, was uh, Tim Allen as Buzz Lightyear and in a movie that Andy would have actually liked Star as Command. a child. Star Command. They, they had done Buzz Lightyear, Star Command. Just it do Buzz Lightyear, well. Star Command. That's it. That, you know, that's it. That's all you had to do. Just do a really good version of Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. Instead, they went with Interstellar, which bored the hell out of people. And everybody's like, it's because of the gay kiss. No, I mean, that was cut, I guess, from it, it was a lot of things. And it's just like, you know, it's not fundamentally not a Toy Story movie. It was a stupid idea. And if John Lasseter was there, I don't think this would have happened. I think he would have been like, hell no, because I heard he wasn't very happy with it. I don't know. You sure you're he's you're very uh into Lassiter. I'm not into Lassiter. <laughs> I'm just like he's never uh groped me personally, but no, I'm just saying like he was and I've said before, and I know it sounds like over dramatic, but he was the the heart of Pixar. They they got rid of John Lassiter, and you can trace every misfire at Walt Disney Animation and Pixar back to John Lassiter getting fired. Because it would have taken that long. It was like 2018. It would have taken that long for those projects to finally hit theaters. And most of them suck. Right. Well, speaking of sucking, um, they're talking about what's coming up next. And what's coming up next is Inside Out 2, which they're already trying to put their, you know, all the agenda spin on that with the journalists and stuff already. Um, that one you might have a little bit of ground on because you already had the first one, which has you know a lot of fans of it. So you might already have an audience coming into that one. But they're having Elio, and they pushed Elio back to 2025. Now Elio um, is about a year after Inside Out, and it looks it, it looks like Strange World again. I mean, yeah, it, not, it I mean, does. not the same it does. story, but the same you know like they're trying to go sci-fi again. I do not think it's going to stick. 
Um, now that could change. We see more of it and it looks better. But so far, I don't think it looks that Im interesting or impressive. I don't think it's going to do well. And those kinds, don't. those kinds of movies, like you're finding better family science fiction movies on Netflix for what the public perceives as being free because they're already paying for Netflix. You know, they have to pay it's like Mars money. needs moms. I mean, I think it's going to be like it's going to go like that route. Yeah. I think it's I think it's a bad idea that they, they're talking about the budgets here. Yeah, they said Pixar's movies are bloated. They're 200 yes. million. Uh, other animation houses have smaller budgets, 75 to 100 right. million in illumination. And how much did it, they made? One point one point three six billion dollars on Mario. Mm -hmm. One point three six because I, I did the video yesterday. One point three six billion on Mario off of like a hundred million dollar budget. OK, you do two hundred million dollars on Strange World and you lose a hundred million dollars. Mm hmm. You know, 70 to 145. I think you lose more than that. But anyway. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I, well, I mean, I'd say it's marketing, but it's not like they did any marketing for that movie. I think they're like, yeah, we're just going to take the L on this. But like their their shareholders have to be looking at this. Like how many money losing Pixar movies are you going to put out there? No, no, because there's articles lately that Iger's doing a great job of fending off the, the proxy battle. I'm like, yeah, OK. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we might be back to just a couple of, of Pixar movies in a decade. We might be ever because it used to be like every other year they put one out. Well, they really know? need to rethink it. Like Inside Out, like I said, you might it might be fun. It might be good. And you might you might do pretty well with that because you have an audience. But Elio, I think you're going to be really pushing on that one. You really got to start building marketing on that one because it does not look that good. Well, they're talking frankly. Toy Story 5, but who wants it after Toy Story 4? I don't think anybody wanted Toy Story 4, to be honest with you, but you know. Three was, a, actually, they could have ended it too, and it would have been fine. What was, what was the three was in, a good ending. In Spaceballs, it was like Rocky 5000. It's like that. Toy yeah. Story 5000. Well, we're, we're pretty much there, right? Because we got, we had the Rocky movies. They had like five Rocky movies, and they brought Rocky back with Rocky Balboa, and then they had the Creed series. So I think we're up to about 5,000 Rocky movies. I don't know. <laughs> I think we I are. I there's a big jump in the math there, but okay. Um, Neil, I can't math good. I can't. Just, um, I, I'm dropping. He I think also I'm, thinks a couple means like five. So, well, for for some progressive families, I wonder what he thinks six inches is. Eight inches. What do you think six inches means? So wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. Um, I, when I ask you, would you like a twelve incher? You're you're and you say yes. Hey, you're to, expecting a six inch to be, sub from Subway, to, right? Yes. Can we do be fair though? People have measured those subs from Subway, and they are usually not, but they're from other places that offered twelve inch subs, and they are not always twelve inches. It's a different um, kind of shrinkage. Some a, a yeah. dude apparently wrote that um, right up. So they're talking here about um, that. We talked about this earlier that the seventy five positions were already eliminated last year. Yeah, including um, Angus McLean and that uh, Galen Sussman. Um, and the one person was the one who ha actually saved the Toy Story movie. Yeah, um, that I thought was really interesting. Um, she was on maternity leave and she just happened to have a backup copy. And I, I've heard the story so many times. She just happened to have a backup copy of Toy Story 2 at home when it was pretty much unheard of. Because we're talking the 90s, right? Like it would have been on like freaking zip drives and stuff. But she had it and she was one of the directors or producers on on Lightyear. I mean, she was there long enough. You'd think. So they like, let you know, you know <laughs> but they got rid of her. You know? The thing is, they probably were like being told to do certain things. They probably did them. And then they got oh, Someone has to take the fall. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not going to be the powers that be that, you know, are actually the ones who greenlit this shit. Yes. Um, so that that's just it. Plus, you know, they're probably looking. I mean, I'm not trying to be a, not trying to be a jerk, but they're probably looking at the age of the employees. And they're like, well. This person's, you know, 65, 70. They're about ready for retirement anyway. Then they cost a lot. Here's they cost the a lot. I, you know, I, I would keep some of them around before I keep some of the, the, the ones that are coming in here that are fresh off of Twitter and Tumblr and that are telling them they all need to do this, that, and the other. And they listen to them and this is what happens. Yo, you listen to them, you get Strange World is what happens. <laughs> you know, you listen to Twitter and Tumblr animation uh, people and you get Strange World. And the thing is, they're going to look at this and they're also going to start cutting costs with, I hate to bring it up, AI, because DreamWorks has already said they're going to use AI. And a lot of the grunt work that these younger animators learn on, they're probably just going to outsource to AI and cheaper shops in India. Because DreamWorks, a lot of their stuff, like Puss in Boots, uh, if I remember correctly, Puss in Boots was rendered almost entirely in India and they saved a ton of money. 
I gotta watch the new one because uh, Pinky Pooh was just watching it the other day and took, talking about how good it was, and I still have not seen it. Oh, it's really good. I need to see it. I, I was surprised. I mean, it. I liked I liked the first one. I loved the second one. I, I thought not the second seen one was it. so much better. It was it was the best Shrek movie. Not that there's a lot of competition, but it was definitely the best Shrek movie since Shrek Two. So Shrek based movie. Shrek based. Shrek adjacent. I was like, it has it's Shrek adjacent. It's not Shrek. But no, it was it was really but good. There's a new one of those coming too. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. If it's as good, I mean, look, I was kind of like, yeah, I don't want to see another Shrek, but if it's half as good as Puss in Boots Two was, I'm like, yeah, okay, we can do Shrek again. Let's not reboot it, but let's let's do some more Shrek. So I don't know. I think uh, the next Shrek will make more money than the next Pixar movie uh, after Inside Out Two. I don't even know how Inside Out Two is gonna do. At least it's not Outside In. That would be a totally different, totally That's different. That's the next movie. step. That's the next step. That's going to be Inside Out 3 is going to be Outside In. Mm -hmm. uh, you can guess what that one's going to be about. Mm -hmm. uh, Rhea, wrap this up. Yep. Yeah, so there we go, guys. Uh, Pixar downsizing. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye.